I think we have a lesson. We have a we have a match that we watched. We had, we had an assignment. Uh, from we Clash, had no work, Clash of the Champions uh-huh. 23. It was the Hollywood Blondes against the uh, uh, Arn Anderson and Ric Flair. I believe this was September of 93, if I have my date right. I don't know. I can't right. read anything. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it was a two out of three falls match for the Tag Team Championships. I believe at this point, uh, Ric Flair was just back from his excursion in WWF. Yes. Excursion. Yes. <laughs> it sounded like he was a young yeah. boy. Yes. It, it, it's where he learned how to be a real world champion. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. uh, God, I hope this is still recording. I can't see anything. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, I, this is a problem. How do you do it? How do you no, wrestle just in this take thing? Take off the damn mask. No, just I can't the mask. You're making me yeah. nervous. I feel like yeah. I'm take the mask off. It's going to get well, worse. No, well, I mean, uh, at least it's not covering your um your nose or your face. If we know you're not going to pass out, <laughs> yeah. God. At least we know it's exactly the opposite kind of Can mask. Wear, pretty much. Wear, yeah. Don't wear, wear it again. It's a mask. mask. Can I wear the like if I wear this mask with my uh COVID mask? Like, is that acceptable? Like, especially like oh, I yeah. want to go in across the street in a lucha mask and the mask and just see sure, if anybody I don't cares know if i trust you to cross the street wearing that no, I want, no i'm not no peripheral vision do not cross the street in a mask like this. Say, it doesn't look like you have straight on vision <laughs> barely but it's probably because i have glasses on under this <laughs> we had a homework assignment <laughs> guys what did you think of this match potter did he, i know you got i think you got the assignment late Perhaps I did, but no, I was able to you see able it, to? and Good. I was able to not not just the clip, but I saw the whole match. Okay, so I did watch the whole match. Okay, and now I'll say this: that I did not, because growing up in Pittsburgh without cable, I was really limited to when I was growing up in the '80s and early '90s to WWF only. So I had no idea about WCW. Jim Crockett, I I knew nothing. And looking back with modern eyes at that match Mm. and the buildup, it's a slow match. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a good match. Mm -hmm. But the fact that, well, I I wrote a couple quick notes. Um, When was Flair never not a legend? I, you know what? I, 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 think, <laughs> I, yeah. I think he became a, a legend as soon as he emerged from a plane wreck. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, 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 he's been pretty much been like treated as a legend for what, 45 years or so now? Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, he was 45 during the time of that match. So was he seriously? He was oh, 43. No, he was 43. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, he was, yeah. yeah. Because I, I, because they did the, um, the, I, I looked at what Matt did about the, um, the flair for the old, the flair for the old. And I wanted to look up, okay, how old was Ric Flair when that he's 43? Like, wow. Okay, Jesus. so him and current AJ. Wow. Okay. Uh, pretty close to the same age. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 And Jeez. the fact that who thought, oh, yeah, you, you know, you see this guy who's old? Yeah. He, he, he'll he still wrestle for another 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the, he, yeah, actually, he actually, he actually, he out, longer than that. He outlinks everybody else in that match. Uh, one for a tragic yeah, reason, oh, but oh. well, I mean, yeah, wrestling, you're, you're, wrestling yeah, career. You're right. It's unfortunate the reason why he outlasts Brian Thorne, yeah. but yeah, he I'm outlasts. I'm talking Arn, math wise. Else, yeah. Arn Anderson and Arn, only Arn, has Arn, about Arn, five. Arn, Arn Anderson yeah. only has about five more years left in him. Uh, well, I mean, that's really Stone, what caused Austin to retire too. He, he had yeah. to yeah. retire because of injury too. Yeah, yeah. Ric Flair outlasted Arn, all those Arn. guys. Like some of those guys weren't even in their prime yet. And he yeah. still lasted longer than them, uh, you know, physically. I mean, you know, unfortunate in every case, unfortunate things happen. Arn had an injury, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, uh, Stone Cold with the neck, uh, and 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 Brian Pillman, you know what happened there. Yeah. So I feel really weird talking about that important topic with this mask on. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it, but but no, it's, but it's true. But it's true. So I, mm-hmm. I, I but for uh, uh, reference, I guess for this. So. Right. Well, the other thing is that the first fall, like I say, the only real fall of the match Mm -hmm. was off of a shoulder block, half cross body, Mm -hmm. where if someone pinned someone like that in the last five years, the crowd would go nuts by saying, what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, 
again, I know the guys in the match, they were ground and pound. There was, you know, Brian Pillman high flying, but he didn't do any high effort. And I don't know timeline of his bad ankle injury to this match in terms of, you know, but I know high flying in early nineties is different from what we consider high flying now, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, So it's like, I watched it and I was like, okay, good match. And, you know, psychology wise and everything else. But it's like, if that played today without the guys being known, you know, if you show it to someone that today, you're going, Oh yeah, it's Austin. Yeah. It's, you know, these are all led. If it was like, Here's four random guys putting on the same match today. Mm-hmm. It, I don't, I don't think it would hold up for a lot of the newer fans. No, but again, this is uh this is Southern wrestling, you know. Right. I mean, so, so I did appreciate because oh, yeah. thank you for confirming that because I remember watching that and I'm just like, oh, maybe I missed that second fall when we got to the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and, the second to, fall to, was the uh, interference run in. Yeah. Uh, so, so to explain, so the first fall went to. Arn and Flair, and they're the challengers. Mm-hmm. And then we had the rest of the match, and then there was a Barry Windham run-in, which led to a DQ, which was the second and final fall. So the Horsemen won by two falls, but with a disqualification, therefore no title change. Um, I appreciated that, that it wasn't Sorry. the formulaic two out of three falls where... Like, I actually chuckle when Tony's like, if we go to three falls, I'm like, oh, come on, you're coming to three falls. And we didn't. <laughs> they threw me. They actually threw me. They actually gave me something different. So credit to them for that. Mike? Yeah. Uh, this just seems very WCW to me. But it because it was. It was, <laughs> yeah, I know, uh, it was like, Clash of the Champions oh, at 6.05 on, not- on, on TBS. Is it the most WCW you can get? Yeah, but all right. But it was WCW in the worst kind of ways for me. Okay. It it was a lot of really good action. Mm-hmm. A hot ass crowd because they're essentially in Flair Country. Norfolk's mm-hmm. pretty close to North to North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, you have Flair d- being awesome at AJ Styles' age. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that that's, that blows my hair back. By the way, I looked up the o- the only person the, there are only two people on the entire card that has lasted longer than Flair and are still currently wrestling today. Scorpio and Dustin Rhodes. Oh wow, that's it. That's it. Wow, <laughs> that's the list. <laughs> that's but the we, list. But, but we do have kids of those wrestlers currently wrestling today. True. True. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um. But, uh, like, I, it's just, yes, credit where credit's due for only having it be two falls. Mm-hmm. But to end it on a DQ, a two out of three falls match, like, I don't need, like, the logistics of that don't even make sense. The logistics of that, don't, because, like, they did get one fall legitimately. So, I mean, if you're saying to me that, like, let's say the first fall is a DQ, but the second fall is a pin, then the titles change hands? No. That <laughs> that doesn't track at all. Yeah. I, I need a referee. I need a referee in here. Listen, I wish we had a referee that listens to the show. <laughs> Potter, no, like, George. Or, or maybe even a booker who listens to the show. Maybe a booker. <laughs> Joe, and, like, Marcus. And it doesn't even, like... It makes the Hollywood Blondes look like crap. Mm. Oh, they, well, I mean, it's not the first time they're going to do that in, the, the in their time, history. But, but, but like, they were the ones driving the feud from what it looked like from the flair for the old stuff. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. like, and I get they're your current, cool. but it just it looked like they booked themselves into a corner because well, they obviously didn't want Ric Flair to be a tag team champion. I, I think this is a, you know, I think it's just like you said. I, I obviously they were setting up for a Flair Barry thing, uh, Barry Windham thing. Uh, so like it was like kind of a token like thing to get ratings on TBS kind of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. You know they were playing by a weird playbook long before we got. Yeah. Uh, like we got we got if the you Nitro. Want to do that, that's fine, but don't have it main event your show. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like, but 
I, I whoa, whoa, yeah, you're whoa. right. I think what you're driving is like they needed a main event for their TV special that was going wherever it was fitting in their calendar between their pay per views and whatnot, and they needed to put out a match that was going to get ratings. And then mm-hmm. once they got it, promoted that match, they needed to just get out of it somehow. So yeah. you've got yeah. you know these four guys out there just just wasting time basically at the end of this thing. I mean, I. Now I can respect like all four guys. I think all four of them are awesome. But like in the context of like the match they put on, I'm just like, this is just nothing. They're just like, you know, just chopping and punching around and, you know, Flair's manhandling Austin and manhandling Pillman and just chop, 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 chop. And, And, you know, and the only Brian Brian didn't really leave the ground much. Well, well... that's why I was wondering about, (laughs) timeline between his injury his ankle injury yeah. and this match because i honestly i'm not familiar with it but mm-hmm. but the, the one thing well, the other thing i thought oh i'm sorry go ahead matt oh it's good just gonna say i mean i like for me like just watching pillman like i wasn't struck by the fact that he wasn't like flying around i was just like he's being a chicken leap heel you know it looks like pillman's injury happened right after this because at Clash of Champions 24, which took place two months after, um, Arn Anderson and Paul Roma beat uh, Steve Austin and Stephen Regal. I know. Oh, okay, yeah, because they had to do a substitute, right? Yeah, oh. uh, it was, I'm, I'm um, seeing a label as 1996 on my on my records on my on my right. Google's. So then it's a it's a different injury, but Pillman okay. was yeah. definitely injured because okay. Regal yeah. replaced him. Sounds right. Uh, I, I will say, like, I, I think. One of my favorite parts of this match was just watching uh was Nick Patrick, the referee. <laughs> yeah. He was like just the, the way he just like he's so good at just believably letting himself just like manipulated and lured yeah. every, mm-hmm. to every corner of the ring. You know, they're doing all these you know, the blondes are doing all these bits where they're choking one guy with their towel or whatnot. And like like Patrick never comes off as like this complete and total buffoon. I mean, you're, you're still kind of like, all right, get, come on, just like turn around and just like, go about it. <laughs> but he's, I mean, Nick, Nick Patrick is really good in that, in that mm. era. He's really yeah. good. I don't, I, I'm not going to try to judge him too far across. The, he's been referring for a long time. He's really good. So he knows what he's doing. The scope is awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. The okay, roof. So, um, it's, it's so cool. Um, I have a story about the Norfolk scope. Okay. Okay. All right, so um, my parents, when they were courting, um, my dad was in the Navy, and they he was stationed in Annapolis, Maryland all the time. So when they would have wrestling shows, NWA shows, my dad occasionally went to them. He took my mom to one at the Norfolk Scope. No way. <laughs> and, and my mom got an autograph from Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Yes. Yes, who she who she said flirted with her as well. I'm like, so my dad could have been Ricky the Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> trying to tell me the baby face of all baby faces was hitting on your mother. I don't believe it. <laughs> um, I believe it. That's <laughs> uh, funny. He's such a um, he's, he's such a nice guy, even to the, especially to the ladies. Uh, <laughs> exactly, exactly sword. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> she didn't even know who he was. Yeah. But I uh, like uh, I start I started talking about she like described him and I'm like, was it Ricky Steamboat? She's like, that's it. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus fuck, mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like only like one of the biggest Hall of Famers of all time, Ricky mm-hmm, the fucking yeah. dragon steamboat. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. And then I showed her a match. Like, I think I showed her the one uh, with him and Jericho. Oh wow! And she's like, "Oh, oh. he still looks good." Oh my <laughs> god! You're like, mom. Oh no! Right. <laughs> the oh, um. Geez. Oh, one one yeah, other I, thing I. Go ahead. No thanks. No, I was say one other thing I noticed was Austin making fun of Arn Anderson and having a pot belly. Yes. He's like, oh yeah, beer belly, huh? Yeah, look There's at you some... having a beer rep. Like, okay, yeah, Austin making some onto someone with the beer belly, huh? Listen, listen, <laughs> I still wish I had the physique that Arn Anderson had at that age, at that moment. So, well, <laughs> well that's the thing. Like I said, Ruth only got into wrestling heavy since we did, since we, you know, got married. So mm. we're talking early two thousands, 
And I showed her a thing of Arn Anderson back when he was part of the Brain Busters. And it's like, okay, see the guy right now in, in, in AEW? Look at him back then. <laughs> it isn't a matter he looks good now. He always looked old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he yeah. always looked like he just hasn't changed. He, he's like, he turned 18, looked he's old, and stayed there for the next 40 years. He's the Paul Rudd <laughs> of professional wrestling. <laughs> mm -hmm. um yeah um just in, in general um this match uh was a waste of my time for the most part <laughs> um i expected a lot more from four legends um but it did send me down the rabbit hole that led back to a flair for the old and some of the other flair for the gold segments those things are awesome sorg the, a flair for the gold does not get enough credit as a great um, interview segment in pro wrestling history. That thing's amazing. It's got like, they spare no expense on that thing. It's so I, cool. I think it, cause, cause it got confused with a lot of like, cause there was even a pay-per-view called a flair for the gold. So that's probably why uh, it gets, well, though, that was the get... subtitle. That was a subline of one of the early starcades. Yeah. But, but right? it's like, it's like if you call, it's like if someone called their segment, like, um, Mega Powers Saint Explode, Val Saint, Val Saint Valentine's Day Massacre, <laughs> or something. You know what I mean? Right. Or, or the climax within. <laughs> like, like that was that was a subtitle. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, but, um, also a couple <laughs> couple little things I noticed about the match. Um, one, I kind of miss ring announcers announcing who the referee is. Mm -hmm. I kind of miss that. That's that's kind of a cool little feature. Um, also, WCW did not have tag ropes. I don't know if I've ever noticed this. Hmm. They did not have tag ropes, and I found it fascinating. Because, <laughs> no, because, like, what's the stop Pillman from running down to the other end of the ring to get a tag? Mm -hmm. That's what the tag rope is there for. You're only allowed to go as, as far as the tag rope. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, I still, to this day, will never understand why throwing someone over the top rope is a disqualification. They didn't do it because Nick Patrick is incompetent and didn't mm -hmm. see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but he's a very good referee. <laughs> sure. Sure. Spoiler alert. Matt Carlin's is in the NWO. Again. <laughs> hey, it took them months to, to smoke him out, all right? He's a very good referee. Yeah, it took them years to actually snuff out what WWE did in like, three months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, WWE's like, oh, these guys are coming in here. Like, take her. Rock, Austin, go get them. Just take him out right now. Just nip this thing in the butt. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, so... But, you know, like, I, ne I never got that. The, the throw over the top rope, like, that's a disqualification, Shavani! Like, ugh. It's a and weird, I, it's a you know, weird I, Georgia... Thing it's a Georgia thing. Matt, you're from... You've been in Georgia for an extended period of time. <laughs> I was in Savannah. It's like a little <laughs> safe zone inside of Georgia. It's not real Georgia. <laughs> um, you know, it's... Um, it's your own, it's, it's your own green zone. a lot better than I thought mm -hmm. he was going to be on, on commentary. Like, the, the stories you always hear about Jesse is that when he goes to WCW, he goes into, like, phone and in mode and he sucks from there on out he's fine he's he's really good i, mm -hmm. I think he liked working with shivani mm -hmm. yeah well i mean shivani I mean, yeah, was, nice was, too. was one of his uh partners in wwe too oh but okay. like but um i still think it's great that it doesn't matter what year it is someone is going to accuse shivani of being drunk <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter doesn't matter if it's aew in 2020 WCW in 1993, and it was very interesting to hear what the cheap wines were back then. So, <laughs> so good on you, Jesse it a, Ventura. It was for... a nice time capsule for you. So, it is, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, we I think we all learned a lot.